This is an overview uh, from our research where I'm comparing what Canadians are doing on their tablets versus their smartphones. Now, when you're building apps, it's obviously very important to think about what that end user is going to do with it and, and the device that they're going to be experiencing that app on. Uh, and it makes differences, obviously, in the development process. So this is an overview of some of those things that people are doing. It seems like everyone's checking the weather, whether you're on a phone or a tablet. But for example, if you're on a tablet, you're much more likely to be reading a book. And so maybe the development for that needs to be a little bit different, considering the device people are going to be working off of. I wanted to mention AppCelerator today. AppCelerator is an organization that IDC works with to do two surveys every year with global developers worldwide. And we survey almost 3,000 developers around the world to understand their intentions with respect to development in the next 12 months. And so we have a survey that we recently posted online. It's absolutely free, so you can go to the website and grab that at www.appcelerator.com. And it does provide a uh, a couple indications that I pro I'm sharing here with you today. So one of those is that we asked the 3,000 developers worldwide, uh, what is it that you're interested in developing? Which platform are you interested in developing to in 2013? So probably not surprising, but interesting to see the different platforms that other developers worldwide are building to because it is an indicator of where things are going in terms of where we'll see support for platforms moving forward. So iPhone, iPad, the most popular platforms to develop to, followed by Android-based platforms. Um, and then mo HTML, mobile web, was in there at 63% of developers very interested, followed by Windows, and then BlackBerry toward the bottom. From that same survey, we asked um, how many different operating systems that you plan to develop to in 2013. And you know, developers aren't developing for every operating system. Everybody has limited resources. And so you know, most developers, 49%, were developing to two operating systems. Uh, and so you, know, you have to pick and choose where to, where to spend your time and your resources. So just some broad industry trends to think about when you're in the concept stage, uh, specifically when it comes to app development. So thinking about the different forms of interaction. So you know, apps today, when you're interacting with them, you tend to be on a touch screen, something like this. It's very flat, and, and you're touching it. Um, but moving forward, you know, devices nowadays, we're starting to see stylus devices on a number of the Samsung products. So that's a different type of interaction. It may impact how you want to develop your idea moving forward. Gestures are being used in all-in-one devices, these multi-TV PC devices from a number of you know, manufacturers like Samsung and LG. So you want to think about the different type of experience now that you're having as a user when you're just using your hand to kind of wave things around. You might not have um, a fine point um, interaction with the, with, the with the app anymore. Uh, and voice recognition obviously has been around for a while, but we're seeing more of it, especially with some of the integration that we're seeing in cars now and with partnerships with Apple and so, some of the other uh, manufacturers. Apps are also becoming more intelligent. So one of the big themes at CES this year was around intelligent apps. And I can think of one example specifically with some of the new Samsung TVs that are out where the, the TV actually starts to suggest what you want to watch to you because it's learned about your behavior. Um, and so you know, it's not just about creating an app that people are going to interact with. It's about the app interacting with that end user as well. And then you know, for years, we're talking about you know, we see all, more and more devices coming out, more smartphones. We're seeing these tablets come out. It doesn't mean that people are consolidating their device purchases. They're actually owning more and more devices. So the average individual now is going to be owning a phone and a tablet and some sort of laptop or desktop. So when you think about, again, the usage of what it is you're building, people are going to be working on multiple devices. And you want to streamline that experience um, across those different devices that they'll be using every day. So a couple of research tips to close off on. Um, when it comes to market research in particular, pay really close attention to the metrics. So whether we're talking about shipment versus sales versus adoption, um, just making sure that you're honing in on what it is that's being tracked in the metric that you're using because it can have big implications. Um, watch the source of your data as well. So the number of respondents in the survey. If there's not a, at least a couple hundred people, I'd be really wary of making large generalizations of the data you're looking at. 
look at the type of respondent as well. Um, I can remember one survey that someone sent to me, uh, or a data point, and it was talking about the number of people that were um, meeting their significant others on online dating sites and saying that this was this huge phenomenon. And granted, there are a lot of people that meet that way now, but you know, I looked at the survey data and I looked at who it was that had answered this survey that was suggesting that all these people were meeting their significant others online. And it was actually done by one of the dating websites, and they surveyed their own, their own users on the website. So obviously the people that are dating on the website are going to answer the survey, yes, tick it off, you know, check off the box, I'm dating online, you know, and, I'm, and I met my significant other online. So again, just, it's a, a bit of a silly example, but it's a real example um, in terms of just, again, the importance of looking at the source of the data. The biggest Brand name companies do this, and I won't say who they are, but they'll often take US data and worldwide data and assume it's similar enough to Canada, so we'll just apply it to Canada. And that's just not the case. I'll give you a couple examples. In the e-reader market, for example, Kobo is the biggest distributor of um, e-readers uh, here in Canada. And that's uh, unique, actually, to, to any other country. If you look at the US, they're just a blip on the map. Um, they're barely even tracked there because it's not a main market for them. Uh, different adoption patterns. Here in Canada, the percentage of smartphones that are shipped into the market uh, as a percentage of total phones every quarter is larger than almost any other country in the world. So we're making the switch from feature phone to smartphone faster than almost any other country save for, I think, Japan last quarter. And so that has big implications, because that means this is a great place to be right now if you're developing apps, because there's that many more people as a percentage of the phones shipping into the market that have access to phones that are more powerful and have access to apps. And so it's important, again, just to understand the different regional differences. I've provided a couple sources here in terms of places where you can find free research. There's lots of free research out there. Um, IDC actually has a, a an app where we highlight some of the research and charts, and this is free, so you can go online today and grab that, and it works on uh, iOS devices today. Mars is a, there's a number of organizations out there. They actually have access to our data as well, so if you're working through them, you can get access to IDC data. Um, and then uh, Deloitte actually just had um, their, uh, an event on Tuesday where they were putting forth predictions for 2013 and they usually do a good job with that and that is usually publicly available on their website. So again, market research, not always the sexiest of topics, but I'd say it's clearly one of the most important, especially when you're starting your journey.